Today we celebrate the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. This is the only major feast that is dedicated to a dogma rather than an event. The mystery of the Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life, one God in three persons. The distinction between person and nature is the key idea here. Nature identifies what a being is, while person identifies who a being is. There is no contradiction in the dogma of the Trinity, since person and nature have different meanings. To put it simply, what and who are not interchangeable. The dogma of the Trinity, three persons in one divine nature, is no contradiction. But it is a mystery that is beyond human understanding. Even so, we can shed light upon this truth of the faith, and real insight is possible. Many people like to quote St. John's words that God is love, but they do not see that the dogma of the Trinity, one God in three persons, gives the only secure basis for believing and proclaiming that God's innermost nature is self-giving love. Trinitarian Christians believe that God is not a something, but rather a someone who knows and loves, and who can be known and loved by us through Christ. The Bible speaks of God in distinctly personal and relational terms, as Father and Creator, and as the living God who freely made a covenant with Israel. Jesus told us to pray to our Father in heaven, not merely to a vague supreme being. Christ our Redeemer said to Philip, He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? Jesus forgave sins in his own name, to the amazement of everyone. And he said, I and the Father are one. His hearers understood Jesus to be claiming equality with God himself, and they took up stones to cast at him. Jesus spoke of his divinity when he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. St. John says that Jesus Christ is the eternal word of God, and that the word is God himself. The Holy Spirit is called the paraclete, the consoler, or counselor. Jesus says that the paraclete, whom he will send, convinces of sin, teaches the truth, speaks, and declares things that are to come. All these expressions speak of the Holy Spirit in personal terms, not as an impersonal force. St. Paul writes to the Corinthians that the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. A temple is dedicated to God. It follows that the Holy Spirit is truly God, as well as personal. The Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life. From Scripture, we can establish that the Father is God, and the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, and that there is only one God. And yet, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are distinct persons, and not interchangeable. If we put all the pieces together of what the Scriptures tell us, we arrive at the doctrine of the Trinity. Christian worship is Trinitarian. It is offered to the Father and through the Son and in the Holy Spirit, one God in three persons from all eternity. In the holy sacrifice of the Mass, distinct persons, you and I, and the saints in heaven and the holy souls in purgatory and the angels, offer worship together to the triune God through the mediation of Christ, the eternal Son of God. The cross of Jesus is the visible historical form taken by self-giving Trinitarian love in response to mankind's need for redemption. The sacrifice of Christ, the Son of God, on the cross is offered to the Father with the words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And into your hands I commend my spirit. When the Gospel says that Jesus gave up the Spirit, it does not only mean his death. It also means that the life-giving Holy Spirit 
is poured out with his precious blood. The Christian life is Trinitarian communion. This is evident in Christ's high priestly prayer to the Father at the Last Supper. The glory which you you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them, even as you have loved me. The Eucharistic sacrifice is offered to God the Father through the Son and in the Holy Spirit. The movement of the Mass is primarily ascending, for it is the worship of the Trinity. Sacramental communion is subordinate to the sacrifice. Communion is received by the communicant, a receiving of God's own Trinitarian life, as our Redeemer said. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. The letter to the Hebrews says that we have an altar from which those who serve the tent, that is, the Jerusalem temple, have no right to eat. In the Eucharistic sacrifice is fulfilled the prophecy of Malachi, that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure oblation or offering would be offered among the nations. Inseparable from the holy sacrifice of the Mass is the Catholic belief in transubstantiation. That word refers to the change of the bread and wine into the very body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ when the priest utters the words of consecration. Christ's words concerning the Eucharist are given in the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. We Catholics take Jesus at his word. Therefore the blessed sacrament is worshipped with the worship due to God alone, which is latria since the sacrament is Jesus Christ himself. Our confidence in approaching God as our Father in heaven presupposes the majesty and the holiness of God. The God who said to Moses from the burning bush, Do not come near, put off your shoes from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Only Jesus Christ, God and man, could cross the threshold of God's holiness by making purification for sins once for all, as the letter to the Hebrews says. Only in and through faith in the Lord Jesus, God's eternal Son, do we share in the life of the Trinity. That is why we dare not approach the Eucharist in a casual or flippant way. St. Paul warns the Corinthians about the dangers of unworthy communion. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment upon himself. The true Eucharistic and Trinitarian spirit is expressed in the letter to the Hebrews. Therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire.